So continuing our exploration of max effects, um, we will have a look at another thing that you can do in relation to delays. Um, so make a new patch. And add. Well, this time, rather than using the tap in and tap out, I'm just going to start with using the delay object. Um, now, the delay object is another way of instituting delay, as you might expect, uh, but it doesn't work with a kind of buffer and playback model like the tap in and tap out. It is just a single object and you specify the amount of delays. Uh, the reason why it's not as effective is because you need to specify your delay in samples and you can only have one delay at a time. So just as before we're going to connect the noise and the delay. Now we specify the amount of delay using the right hand inlet and we will get it going. So at the moment we've got uh, noise being sent straight to the output and also through the delay onto the output with a delay of zero. Notice what happens when we add one sample's worth of delay. Now, you don't notice it as a delay, but you do hear a change in timbre. And that is because that delay introduces a phase difference between the two outputs. And that, depending on the, the length of delay, will give you filtering at a particular pitch if I increase the number again, we change that pitch, and we keep changing that pitch as we increase the num as we, we increase the delay length in samples. So ultimately, we're introducing what's called a comb filtering effect. Um, and if you wanted to see why it's a comb filtering effect, you will see that if I give a spectroscope display, you'll notice that there are um, regular peaks and troughs which change depending on, there you go, now you can see them. So those peaks and troughs are at regular intervals along the uh, spectrum of the uh, sound and they introduce that characteristic kind of uh, cone filter effect. I'm going to provide a second one of these. Whoops. Give you a songram as well. So you can see this comb filtering effect also in this uh, spectrogram view. And as we change this over time, we get a changing character to that cone filtering sound. And we could automate that process. So if I put in a line object, oops, um, and say, right, I want to go from a delay of zero to a delay of 200 over three seconds. And we get that nice kind of effect with that. If I were to then uh, go back, so 200 to 0, oops, over 3,000 milliseconds, and we go back in the other direction. And you can imagine that if we were to increase the delay length and then decrease it in a regular pattern, we will get some kind of flangey effect. So how might we get an even oscillation between, say, 200 samples and zero samples? Uh, well, we can use our old friend the cycle object. Well, the cycle object, what does it do? It gives us a sine wave, but we'll need to do a little bit of work on that in order to get that to work for us. So rather than doing any maths, we'll just use the scale object. And we know that the cycle object goes from between minus one to one. 
Actually, we don't really need the points in here, but I'll put them in anyway. And we will simply have that go from 0 to 200. And we'll display that on a number tilde object where I change the sampling rate of the number to 20 so that it's easier to see. Send that straight into the delay. So I won't go through this uh, number box because we can display what that's outputting here. And we should, hopefully, So having started with the delay, I did that just to make it a little bit clearer what was going on. Um, but in fact, if we were to uh, to do it properly, then we would probably still use the tap in and tap out object. And it's that's quite easy to do. We'll just use uh, tap in and tap out. So we'll use the tap in, we'll give it a, we won't need a long delay length, we could use even less than 500 milliseconds, but I'll use 500 milliseconds. Um, send that in to tap in and out of tap out. So we can replace this delay object. Now because we're working in milliseconds here, um, we would need to modify these values to, uh, to be in milliseconds. So what are we going between? Well, if we were going between 0 and 200, we'd be going between 0. And it turns out that 200 samples is about 4.5 milliseconds. So we can use that instead. So we have a, a flange effect. We don't need to only apply that to noise. We could uh, we could apply it to a sound as well. Oops. Get rid of that. So if I run it through a drum loop sound and we get our archetypal flangey sound applied to the, that drum loop, along with hopefully an understanding of how that works. And of course, as with any of these effects, uh, I'm only using this a little player or a noise input because we're discussing how the effects work and how to build them. Um, you can simply implement this alongside or at the end of whatever patch you end up building in order to apply effects to the sounds that you're producing through synthesis or sampling um, uh, and just demonstrate that you, you have... Uh, explored some of these effects in the output. We'll have a look at some ways in which you can choose which effects to use if you have a bank of them, for example, um, in due course through perhaps the matrix object or simply through gates. Okay, just uh, as a, an adjunct, um, there will be a patch on Blackboard or for those who are interested outside the university, I'll put a link to it on my website. This is basically what we've just looked at, um, but a slightly neater version. So you have your comb filter version where I've got a kind of line object running through the uh, delay values. If you want to do any more comb filtering effects, then there is a comb filter object. Um, so if you uh, go to its help file, um, you can learn a little bit more about that. Um, and try it out. So uh, here you're you're allowed to, to spe specify a delay in milliseconds um, and uh, anyway fiddle with the controls in here and uh, see what you get. And then the two different types of flanger using the delay and the tap in tap out. Uh, I mentioned uh, the uh, converting samples to milliseconds so I've put a little converter in here for you using the scale object. Uh, so if you put in 200 in here, 
uh, it'll come out with the uh, sorry 200 samples in there you'll get the duration in milliseconds that you need to put into the tap in tap out object in order to get it to delay the same uh, amount so anyway have a look at the uh, that patch if you think it would be useful to you you might want to include them in your work <laughs>